I can hear the word of the Lord. Because the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. The day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of all the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from the it is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Today I'll like to talk to you about general revelation and then special revelation. General revelation speaks of how how, how no man is with is 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 is, 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 is excused. For knowing the glory of God. For everything proclaims the glory of God. These trees sing of the glory of God. These stars sing of the glory of God. This sun, the handiwork of God, proclaims the glory of God. His weightiness, the fact that He exists, you know the one true and living God. The problem is that you reject the one true and living God. This tree praises God more than you do. Your soul, your heart is desperately wicked. It has broken fellowship with God. All animals, all trees, the planet brings glory to God, but you spurn God, you hate God, you hate Him with everything, with every fiber of your being. Apart from God, apart from Christ, you have a broken relationship with God. But my dear friend, <clears throat> the gospel is this, is that even while we were as sinners, Christ died for us, us wicked people, us natural born haters of God. Christ our Lord was born of woman, born under the law. Now to speak of the law of God, it converts the soul. Now how does the law of God convert the soul? There's three uses of the law of God. First is to convict of sin, to convict you of your sin. He tells us to have no other gods, but naturally in your rebellion, you yourself like to set, you, is you like to set yourself up as God. You like to be the one in authority. You like to be the king of your life. But my dear friend, you must bow the knee. Every king, every ruler, every individual, every, whether poor, rich, whether you have all authority over all men, you must bow the knee to the true one king, the Lord of lords and the king of kings. He alone is the way into salvation. You are walking two paths right now. One, you may be walking the path of the ungodly. You seek counsel from the ungodly. It leads to the path of death. But my dear friend, there is the path of the righteous. This leads to life, to eternal life. But the only way that you can enter into that path is through Christ our Lord, who was the first one who entered that path. He came and dwelt amongst, amongst us upon this earth and lived the perfect life that you could never live. He lived in perfect righteousness, perfect holiness. And he walked that blessed path of redemption for our souls and for our bodies. <coughs> my dear friend, what path are you walking today? My dear friend, what path are you driving your vehicle down today? Is it the way of life or is it the way of death? My dear friend, walking across the street right there, my friend, what path are you on? The path of the godly or the ungodly? I pray it's the path of the godly. My, my dear friend, I once walked upon the path of the ungodly. I took ungodly counsel. I hated God. I hated everything to do with God. But by the grace of God, I heard the gospel. The gospel of restoration. The gospel of redemption. That alone is in Christ. For Christ our Lord says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. My dear friend, the Father is the destination. Christ is the path. And the Holy Spirit is the vehicle by which you travel until the Father. My dear friend, the law of God, which convicts all of, uh, which convicts all of us of our sin. If you're breaking one commandment, you're breaking them all. My dear friend, you may say that I've never murdered anybody. Oh, my friend, you have been deceived. Have you ever been angry with anybody? Have you ever hated your brother? My dear friend, Christ our Lord says that's equal to murder. The Ten Commandments go deeper than just the outward expressions of your actions but it pierces to your innermost being, to the very marrow of your heart, the very marrow of your body. 
My dear friend, it convicts and it condemns. My dear friend, if you look at the law of God, it is weighty. My dear friend, outside of Christ, you are under the law. And it is condemning. It is damning. Because if you've broken one, you've broken all. My dear friend, I used to worship other gods. Many of y'all may have a may have graven images of different gods. Maybe you may even have a picture of Christ. My dear friend, that's a graven image. That's blasphemous for you to have a picture of Christ in your midst. My dear friend, there is no perfect picture of Christ. You may have it in your children's storybooks. You may even have it on your church walls. But my dear friend, that's a graven image. It must be ripped down and torn out and removed. Most of all, you may reform a graven image of Christ in your heart that is unbiblical. My dear friend, it's not just the pictures that you may bow down and worship to. My dear friend, it's the way you view God. My dear friend, the way you need to view God is through Scripture alone. He himself has revealed himself to us. You have the law of nature that reveals his glory. It, it pours out speech day to day. And my dear friend, as you look at this building over here, you know that it had an architect. It had a builder. My dear friend, you are without excuse. You know that one, you know that there's one who opposed the universe, who opposed your very being, that provides you with your spirit, with your soul, that gives you very life. But I bet dear friend, the one that upholds it, he can take it down. He can take it away from you. But my dear friend, the law of nature is not sufficient enough to bring you redemption. It may drive you into Christ. My dear friend, but the law of God has been given to us to convert the soul. The perfect law of God. The, per the law of the Lord is perfect because it reflects the perfect God. But my dear friend, you, if you study the law of God, you realize how you are unperfect. You know that you're unperfect because the law of God is written upon your heart. And it condemns you. <clears throat> but my dear friend, the, the beauty is this. That he has revealed in the last days, he has given us his son. He has spoken to us through his son, through his living word. That is sharper than any sword. And it can pierce your heart, my friend. It may be piercing your heart right now. It may be piercing your soul. My dear friend, turn. Turn unto Christ. And come unto him. Restore the fellowship that's been broken since the creation of the world. From our first parents, Adam and Eve. Our fellowship has been broken. But Christ our Lord came to restore that fellowship. He himself was the second Adam. In the first Adam, you stand condemned. You are all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. But my dear friend, are you a daughter and son of God? Born of the Spirit, not of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. Have you been born again in Christ our Lord? My dear friend, the use of the law of God is it convicts of sin, but it doesn't leave you there, my friend. Today you have heard the gospel. It's made to drive you into Christ. It is a schoolmaster. It is a taskmaster. It is weighty upon your soul, upon your head. I pray that you feel the weight of it, that it crushes you, that it crushes you to your knees, Amen. and you come unto Christ, and you run unto Christ, and run into his arms. My dear friend, I pray that you become weary and heavy laden of your sin. There's some of y'all, you might think that you're all righteous, that you're perfectly good. I pray that you become weighty today, you become weary of your sin. But there's some of y'all that have already been beaten up by your sin. You're tired of the sin. You're tired of how it has destroyed your life. My dear friend, come unto Christ. Come unto Christ and have eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ our Lord. <clears throat> and then you may be saying to yourself, I've already came to Christ. I already know of Christ. My dear friend, it's not enough just to know of Christ. My dear friend, even the demons know of Christ. The demons know Christ and they shudder. My dear friend, you may say that you know Christ, but do you shudder? Do you shake? But, but that alone will not save you. You must come unto Christ. You must believe upon Christ and believe upon the work of Christ upon the cross. My dear friend, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And I pray that your soul will be converted this day through the law of God. I pray the law of God will drive you unto Christ drive you into salvation that comes along through Christ our Lord. But the beauty of the gospel is this, that Christ was born of woman, born under the law. He placed himself under his own law and lived it perfectly, that you might find redemption from your sins.
by my forgiveness of your sins in Christ our Lord. So my dear friend, there are two revelations been given that I've spoken of so far this morning. That of natural revelation, general revelation. You see the heavens, you see the trees. And I'm a farmer. <laughs> and I work with animals all the time. And I have a lot of chickens. You know what's sad? And my chickens praise God more than I do. <laughs> they praise God more than I do. Because I'm a, I'm a sinful man. But praise be to God for Christ, who came and died for our sins. My dear friend, I pray that you'd have faith in Christ alone. In Christ alone. In God alone. For the glory of God alone. My dear friend, come unto Christ. My dear friend, what path are you driving today? I pray it's unto Christ. I pray it's not to the ungodly. My dear friend, I walked upon that path. Come unto Christ, sir. Come unto Christ.